up, what up, what up, organic fanatics? What's good? What's good? Welcome back to El Canal, the channel. Mi gente que lo que was popping, what it is, what it was, all that good stuff. Ni hao, bienvenido, all that. My Latinos, gringos, Asians, everybody, whatever color you are, we all the melting pot here. We love all y'all. Come on in, come on in. Got some things to talk about. All right, this might be a little long video. I'm gonna. Try to keep it as straight and narrow as I can. We're going to bounce around a little bit because we got to reflect on what's going on. This is the fire season. All right, the fire season where everything is up for grabs. Everything's available. Everything's off the books. Everything we've been talking about all year, trade, fire, blee, blee, blah, blee, 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 blee. All that stuff is all happening now. All Everything's on the table. However, we got to think as an organization. Right now is the business aspect of the team. Right now we're talking about Money as a business is your business, how you want to run it, how you want to be successful. In order to see our future, we have to understand our past. So let's look and not the past where you got the PTSD, the playoff talk syndrome disorder that a lot of our fan base suffers from. Some of them are strung out on some things because of that. So bring it down. But let's look back at a recent past. So we're looking from the time that Leon Rose was in place, they got the team, the front office. All that came into play and some of the recent uh, history that's going on now with Scott. So as Leon was coming in, Scott Perry was still in the helms. He was still the GM at that time. They got rid of uh, the other guy. Uh, having a brain fart. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we have him at the helms there. He was basically transitioning, getting everybody squared away, teaching Leon the ropes as far as what he has to do as a general manager they kept him on board he had a good eye for talent for the most part scott perry so he's teaching the ropes to leon rose teaching him what to do even though leon is a negotiator as he was an agent one of the top tier agents overall he had to understand the business side of it so that's why he kept scott perry he got all his people that he would need to help make sure everything would go the way he wants but he has people with better understanding in certain positions that way he can't fill the job of every spot. That's what Tips try to do, and that's why Tips fail. Too many hats. He couldn't wear all of them at the same time. So Leon was smart in getting the right people in the right places to do their jobs. The Brock Ollards, uh, Walt Perrin, you know, all the people he got. He got the best of each one, um, which, by the way, a lot of these were from what team? Utah Jazz. Keep that in mind, okay? All these people from Utah Jazz, how they built a lot of the people that they got from uh, Utah, the reason they went with Utah or as far as the leadership there is because most people don't want to go to Utah. Most people have never wanted to go to Utah. So Utah was forced to do things the smart way, to build the right way, to scout for talent the right way, um, to basically build from within, build organizationally, uh, start foundations, build a certain game plan, build a certain way. So that way they can be competitive in the West because nobody really wanted to go there. And they're competing against all the Lakers, you know, all these other top teams where everybody wanted to go play and be competitive. Ever since the Malone uh, Stockton days, they've been building right. They had a stable coach for many years. They had a, a coach in a certain way that they wanted to play. And they started with the coach. And then they build around that game plan of how they wanted to play, how they wanted to build the right type of players for that system. It's a pattern here if you guys are paying attention of what they wanted to do of a system, right? And then that's how they build around there and they, they got the best players that would fit for that system, the right character for that system, the right mold for that system. And it worked out. It's continued to work. Um, they've got Donovan Mitchell, which yes, we can cry that we could have had him instead of Frank Nilakina. We digress. We're not going there. PTSD guys, it's okay. It's not meant to be a trigger. Let's bring it back. Let's just breathe. It's okay. We're going to move on from those. Okay. Yes, we could have Donovan. Nonetheless, they got Donovan. They got other players in different um, position, key players, cheap. They got Rudy. Um, so they're bas basically, they had great scouting, good scouting, good foundation. And they had a good capologist, which that's what we have out now. So they knew how to manage money, what's the appropriate amount to pay each player so they can build right. So that way they don't overpay players and then they have a skinny foundation or they just have to get the cheapest players to try to build right. That's what we're, and if you see that game plan, that's what we're doing now, essentially. 
now that uh, Scott Perry has done his two year old, his two years, um, Leon is already familiar with the business. They they negotiated as a team, so it was always a group decision. Even though Leon always had the final say because he had, he knew how he wanted to run. He was a president. He is a president of how he wanted to run. They started with the coach, someone who was yes in the CAA, Thibodeau, but they knew defense wins championships. You wanted a big. They wanted a coach that they can trust, know, and that they can work together. It's usually when you get some coaches, some coaches want to do their own thing, and they usually clash with the front office. So you can't have that division from a coach and then the front office, and then that leaks into the players and teams and stuff like that. So the whole purpose of what they did there was that way they can have unity starting from the front office and management. So you have Thibodeau, who works well with all the front office. They're going to work together as a team. They're going to work as a game plan. So they're not just going to get rid of and dump him just for somebody else who they don't know or who's not going to run the system. You get rid of a coach, you're going to have to rebuild the whole system again. You're going to have to teach that, see if that uh, coach is going to work with the game plan of what you're trying to build. So that you have to have unity from the top down. So that's why you're seeing Thibodeau there. That's why they did primarily a four-year plan or so if you're looking at the contracts of the players. So four-year window is what they're looking at to be competitive, to build a solid foundation, to build a type of team that they want to build, a mold that they want to build that would attract stars and high-talented players to the New York Knicks. So unlike Utah, uh, the Knicks have a destination. They are a major market, the major market other than L.A. that you go. So they're trying to make it a desirable place for people to come, a right foundation, not one of turmoil that we've had the last couple of years, although our fan base seems like they're still in turmoil. They're trying to turn it around from the inside out, make it a, a good place to come play, and then that to trust in the management there. So that's what you've been seeing the last two or three years, building the right way, getting the right acquisitions, and building that system. And then that's where we're at now. Now, the last two or three years, well, the last three years, basically since we started, we've taken huge leaps and bounds. We went from developing, which we thought we were going to try to do our youth. We uh, did well drafting. Uh, Leon Rose, Scott Perry, even the prior regime, they did well at acquiring assets. They did well at staying under the cap and being fluid with the cap where it gave us flexibility. So so Steve Mills, that's what I was missing, Steve Mills. Steve Mills and Scott Perry, they did well prior to that, getting some assets, doing what they could, even though they were kind of thrown under the bus last minute by KP at that time, to flip, get some picks for him, which ended up uh, getting us Julius Randle. So that's... um. We started making moves at that point and, and slowly progressing from there. We did the best that we could at that time with Julius Randle. There was no one, again, that wanted to play for us. Even though we tried to go after them, they didn't want to go. They went elsewhere. So we landed Julius Randle. Good talent by then. We got at a good contract for about 60 something million dollars. We got him at a good price. Ended up turning out really well. We go to the playoffs the first year. Fell as a dud. We didn't have enough talent. Um, that... Uh, we tried to make that second run the next year with the Noel, uh, Noel, Mr. Catcher's mid hands, and and the other players we had there that we didn't have other talents. We tried Alec Burke too hard at the helm as a point guard that failed. Leon Rose saw what we need, got rid of them, flipped uh, to get more picks. We drafted uh, excellently. So if you look at all the draft picks, we've done very well, at least a seventy five percent success rate. So well, in fact, that. We might even be talking about trading some players because they've developed so well over the last three years. Their value has increased. And now you have a good problem to have is now you got so much talent. So much, what do you do? How do you build from there? So then you look at what we've done this year. This is our third year with Thibodeau. A third year with basically another a new team within three years. Who we had the first year, we tried to run it back the second year. Second year, we drafted players in between there and developing. Those players are gone. And now the people we ran this year with our youth. Everybody complained last year. We need to let our youth play. We need to, need to let our youth run, let our youth develop. Uh, we did that. We did a combination of with our regular talent, letting our youth develop. All the other players come out. They've done well. So good that, again, we may have to trade some. Shout out IQ. Grimes, who's still only in the second year. This is going to be his third year coming up. 
who sees what he can grow into. He's gonna he could be very elite, a uh, great defender. Now he just has to work on his consistency on, on a steady shot that he's good at and a catch and shoot, which is huge. Catch and shoot is what we're trying to develop here. Um, and then now we have what we have now, our current roster. So all that to say, you see the format to recap what we just did. We're looking at the Utah format of what they did. That's why we got a lot of their talent. Uh, we're establishing ourselves similar, not what Utah has done before, but similar to what they did. We were somewhere and we are somewhere that people didn't and don't want to come. So now we had to build organically. Is that what I did there? Anyway, so we're building organically on there. Got our talent. Everybody's developing. We got a system. The reason you can't keep getting rid of coaches is because that system is based off that coach. The players have the buy-in with the coach. The players believe in this coach. They believe in the front office. They're working together. They see the unity. They're seeing the trust that we put in the players to develop. Now it's up to the players to develop their skill set. And then that's where we are at now. Now, the contracts we gave Julius, we got him at 50% uh, off for the most part. He qualified for $200 million. He wasn't worth the $200 million. We still got him at a great uh, contract with some bonuses. If he hits All-Star and other things, he would get these uh, bonuses. Same thing with RJ. RJ was a great contract. Other people in his level there, some other people got $195 million. Or Kevin Porter's and other people that they got paid a ridiculous amount. And we still got RJ, who was our number three pick, the highest pick we've had probably since, since Ewing. We got him at a, at a good rate. Regardless of efficiency and all that, we got him at a very good contract. I think uh, we were trying to get Donovan Mitchell for him. It was uh, one that we saw that was at a superstar. We were saying if Leon's going to try to pull a trigger, they got to get a star talent. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is definitely a, a all-star talent. He's a, a star, not quite a superstar, but a star. Something that we could have had that would add, yes, uh, efficiency, scoring, and then if you're looking at how they're building, um, how we're building here, almost think about Utah. Even with even with uh, JB and Mitch, Mitch is similar to uh, Gobert. What Gobert was right? Gobert is not a shooter, scorer. He's a rebounder, lobber, and a blocker. That's what we have in Mitchell. You look at what Donovan is uh, when he was at that in Utah. Shannon Brunson, very similar. Uh, the difference is that we have RJ, which could have been their Connolly or vice versa, or Donovan would have come over here and he could have been the one to him. Even though they we're undersized, um, if you put up that much scoring, uh, you live with it and you hope that uh, Randall and uh, Mitchell Robinson would get enough rebounds for you and guards that can rebound like Grimes, you know, that you would have been able to make up for that. Nonetheless, that didn't go through successfully. So for some reason that that wasn't pulled. They wanted too much, so they left it on the table. Um, so if not, we would have had Mitch and we would have had Jalen Brunson. Uh, that would have been, I think it would have been good, very formidable. So we're looking to add talent. That didn't work. We ran with what we had, run what you brung, and then uh, we did good again this year. We bet it on ourselves. It paid off. Randall's value prior to this year was. As low as it can possibly go, considering you had a horrendous year, the thumbs down, all the things that you can go back. We can go back to it. Got to give him his props. By the way, salute Julius. Wish you a speedy recovery. You know, and good, shout out to Julius. Hopefully he gets a speedy recovery and comes back whole, strong, and healthy uh, to him and his family. Uh, so he, got, he came through. Big year for him. Developed. Came through as a monster. Did his thing. No player is perfect. No player is perfect. None. Nobody. There's no perfect player. MJ even had his downfalls and, and areas of opportunity. So, Julius came through. All-star, all-NBA, two times in three seasons. You got to give props, man. You got to give props where something's successful. Whether you like him or not, he's done huge leaps and bounds. Huge. If it wasn't for Julius, we wouldn't be where we're at now. If it wasn't for Jalen Brunson, we wouldn't be where we're here now. Jalen Brunson took us to the other notch. That's what we're missing. We're always missing point guard play. We're missing smart basketball play. That's where Jalen Brunson came in. So you can see some dynamic there that gave us a good uh, recipe of success, which got us to the second round of the playoffs, the farthest we've been in a decade, literally. We didn't play that good. Yes, here and there, we didn't play as good. We went as far, we went farther than anyone anticipated from the beginning of the year. 
Now you see where you can grow and things where you can get better. If you just improve from where we're at, we could have been where the Heat are right now. We knew we had a better team. They had more experience. So if we just stand the pack and we add experience, we can go back to the second round or in that fight and all the way to possibly the next contention if we just stand where we're at. We could because we don't have to extend OB. We don't have to extend IQ. And we could worry about that next summer and see how their value goes and raise them up again as far as the value and then trade at that point, which is probably more lucrative for them. So again, that's something we can go. That's one scenario. Just do what we have now, improve a little bit better. We can get an Alec Burke as, as a mid, uh, mid-level. That alone would help us. Bench scoring, that's someone, if someone's struggling in the, as a starter, you can plug uh, Alec Burke there. He already knows the system. Alex, uh, Alec Burke is a cheat code. He's a cheat code for us. So that's someone that we can get that minimum, and that w- that alone would help us. You're not gonna put you're not gonna put Alec Burke in the situation we had two years ago where he's playing all these minutes and all that. That's where Jalen Brunson came in. When Jalen Brunson gets tired, you have Manuel quickly to take over, who already played 19 to 20 games as a starter uh, for Jalen Brunson in that year. Fit in, plugged in, great. So if you keep Jalen uh, IQ at the role right behind, uh, right behind. Uh, Brunson, and then you, you know, mix around Alec Burks and Josh Hart. That already is a success right there. That right there is easy, not much to do. You're not losing assets. You're not risking it. That right there is probably the easiest. Leon Rose, frugal, still successful, still help out the team, helps uh, Thibodeau trust another veteran that he knows that knows the system, plug and play. That alone right there is going to solve. A third of our problems keep that in mind sidebar that anyway so that's if we stand pat that's what we're looking for we're growing organically there we can run it right back don't have to do anything don't have to pay anybody except for josh hart who waived his extension obviously so he can get more money uh, let's get right into josh hart. i'm talking about him now so we'll, we'll feature him later but josh hart waived his 12 mil he's looking for a long-term contract wants to stay in new york He's comfortable, just had his family, doesn't want to be uprooted, moving around. He's been bounced around a lot. He's looking for a home. Found a home with New York. New York loves him instantly. We love his game. It's New York basketball. He's with his best friend, his homie playing, Jalen Brunson. There's nothing after that. Now it's just agreeing on money. Um, Again, look at the contracts we gave out to not only Julius. Look at the contracts that we gave to RJ. Now is where the money, that's where the capologists and the money come into play. He waived $12 million. People are talking about 18 7 If you're looking at New York and how we play, we're not going to pay people at the top dollar. You know, if you're looking at 2K trades, it always gives you an option of how can you get this player to come to you? Either money, you know, or you're, you're coming to New York or whatever it is. He loves New York. He wants a secure home. So all that to say... I don't think we give him 17, 18. He could go somewhere else. He could probably get more money, but he's not going to get maybe a longer deal that we'll offer him. I think we offer him a three, four year. I really think a three year. I think we give him three years again because of that timeline, right? We gave Randall a four year. We gave RJ a four year. We gave Jalen Brunson a four year. Again, keep that in mind. Four years each contract. That's our window. That's our window to see what we're doing. Four years. Coach Thibodeau. It's in that same window, four years, right? Contract within that time frame. So I think they would give um, Josh Hart a three-year, which would fit that window of Jalen Brunson, RJ, Randall, anyone they signed, they're looking at that time frame. Uh, so I think they give him a three-year, maybe a four-year option. I think they give it to him at about 14 and change, which is about $42 million for three years. It's two more million that he's making more now. It gives him security for at least three years, maybe a fourth year team option that he'd be with us. So I think that's where it's going to be. I think we're looking at about 14 mil because that gives us money, flexibility. He wants to win, you know, so everybody wants to win. So they're getting very respectable contracts, even though the cap's going to go next year. So you want to give him some money now before the cap hits. A good, respectable deal, but he's looking more something long term. That's why you waive. Uh, the extension. That's why you waive that money because you don't want just that one year quick money. You want some security. 
got a family. He wants to play with his homie three years. They went to the playoffs. His first time in the playoffs, he's going to want to be here. He sees the Knicks are, we got something. Give him some security. Give him some money. I'm saying 14 mil. That's where I'm at with that. That's going to play in the key later. So Josh Hart, 14 mil. He stays. Um, we're going to either buy out, which I don't think is a buyout, but we're going to get rid of Evan, and then we're going to get rid of um, Rose. That's $34 million there. Okay, so that, that comes into play there. $34 million minus the $2 million for additional from Hart, what we would have paid him on there. So you're looking somewhere around $32 million left out of that uh, money from uh, Rose and Evan. All right? Now, we just kept everybody the way it is. We paid Josh Hart. We got rid of Rose. We got rid of Evan. All right? Now, team's the same. Nothing, nothing else happened. We haven't traded anybody. We got about $32 million left. Best case scenario. Every, we keep everybody in, run it back the way it is. Ideally, uh, you're looking at Christoph Porzingis has $31 million that he can get this year, or he can waive that. Now, he's basically, the team doesn't have any option for him. They could try to sign and trade. I don't know how that benefits Porzingis to try to get money to help the organization get better. They just free him. I don't know if they do that. They could do sign and trades, but if he waves that money, we can sign him just for money. Again, $32 million left. We can give him $31 mil a year. Three-year, four-year option for him. You know, uh, about $31 million a year in that ballpark. Plug and play. Everybody stays the same, at least for this year with KP. That moves uh, Mitchell down to the bench. Now you're talking about JB. Grimes, talking about RJ, Randall, and Porzingis, all five of those. When you look at the numbers, which I'll go over with you in a second, just adding Porzingis gives you 3.4 3 in offensive production and 3.6 in defense, just adding him. Out of all the scenarios that I'll give you in a second, you're going to see that, that that right there gives us the best offensive option and defensive option on there. That also bolsters your bench, which you move Mitch down to the bench. He's not going to play as he much heavy minutes. And then if we keep IQ, which we more than likely do, maybe give do some burn time more. And then maybe move IQ more to a one and two. They can flow off of each other. But you're talking about Deuce, IQ, and then you're talking about Josh Hart, Hartenstein, and Mitch or Obi and Mitch from the bench. Maybe we trade Hart and Sign. There's other options we could do. I'm just giving him overall. You know, so big, big, big plug there. So I think KP would be, again, we're looking for star, home run swings. This is what everybody's talking about now. Can we get a star? Can we get a superstar? Superstars, if you look at our last video, there's not many of them. Most of them are in the 200 mil. That's going to cap you, take a lot of money out. There's not many superstars. Not if. And the key to the superstars that you're looking for has to be within our age range, right? Going back to what we are talking about, how they're building like Utah. If you look at what the Knicks have been doing, they've been looking for people who can score and catch and shoot is what we're looking for now. Catch and shoot players. 3 and D wings, 3 and D shooting guards that can catch and shoot. That's why if you look at how Utah was built, uh, they had Bogdanovich or, I mean, uh, Whatever, they catch and shoot. They were a three-point. They would spread the floor, let Donovan work, let go bear work. Shoot, Donovan, go bear. So that's where right now. Once Grimes gets better this offseason with the catch and shoot, penetrating, he can spread the floor. Uh, all right, so now we're talking. So that leaves clog in the paint, which is RJ and Julius Randle. They played together four years. It hasn't been that well. When you're looking at the numbers, statistically, as great as RJ did in the playoffs, which helps because that did bring up his value, uh, his efficiency, his amount of touches he has, he hasn't been that well. Look, can't tell me I'm not an RJ supporter. Look at all my videos. I'm a huge RJ supporter. I'm not talking about who we like, who we don't like. Again, just as a business. As a business, if you're the Knicks, you're in the organization, you can love people, but you still got to be productive and, and bring profit into your to your business um, out of those two i think rj is the one that has the highest trade value over randall you're not going to get anything fair back for randall if you try trading him you're not going to get that productivity you're, you're always going to take an l 
Leon's not taking any L's. Anybody that, that he he outplayed what his contract was, just like Jalen Brunson, uh, where Randall was, the only other players above him, um, Sacramento Kings, they already got their the Sabonis, and they're pretty much equal on there. Uh, Sabonis, they're not obviously not getting rid of Sabonis. Other than that, it was like a Giannis, the Joker, and players that are in the $200 million super stars. Not stars, superstars. No, they're not letting them go. So you keep Randall. That's just simple math. The organization loves him. He, without him, we wouldn't got to a rat. RJ struggled in the first half of the year like he has been. But because he's young, he has the most upside. He's 22. He has a great friendly contract that starts this upcoming year. The cap's coming next year where it goes up. You can get a young star, a young Jimmy Butler-esque player who's still developing, who's definitely young enough, who's going to be great for sure. Uh, but... Because we've developed so fast within the last year, last two years, our window has gotten a whole lot closer. We thought it was going to be farther. We're going to be a while before we can compete. We can compete now. And there are players that can take us to that next level right now that we can acquire that are not superstars, but that are stars. We can build with a lot of great players. So I think RJ would be the odd man out if uh, the right trade or opportunity comes up. So I think that's where... It's, that's what's going to happen if a trade comes to play. If the trade comes to play. We're in that area now. Forget drafts. The draft, we're nowhere near the draft. We're not going to touch anybody in the draft. Tibbs is not going to play a rookie. None of the players that are there are going to even touch the rotation. That's why. And they already knew. They scouted it. That's why they were getting rid of the picks. Because there was nobody that they were going to do. Because they saw their window. And nobody they can get right now is going to be in their window. Forget the draft. We may get picks if somebody gets traded, if an IQ gets traded or something of that nature. If something like that gets traded, forgive me, I'm working. All right, so forgive that. Uh, but anyway, so if somebody gets traded, it's the only way that we're going to get a pick on there. That's the only way we're going to get a, a, a draft pick. And even then, I think we would use it as some kind of bait to get someone else. All right, so now let's get into the meat and potatoes. You got all that? How we're building the organization? where we came from the organization, how the organization is looking to build, our talent, how far we got, and what we can do with this talent to move forward. Everything we did, screams, add a little bit of seasoning, adding a little adobo to the steak, season it, and it's delicious. And then you go from there, okay? So we got the meat, we need to add a little seasoning to it, now we gotta let it marinate, marinate, okay? So now we gotta let it marinate, gotta let it cook. Okay. It smelled a little good, but we need to add a little something. We need a little bit of adobo, you know, a little recato, some of that good stuff. So that's what, when we got that, we roll it. So that's what we're looking to add. We got, this, got the beef, and we need to add seasoning to it. Let's get into some conversations here, all right? So we've been talking, and not just me, shout out to Rahib the Remnant. He's the one that's been all over the KP opportunity. Give my man props, that's my brother. All right, so KP would be a star we can get home cooking, brings it up. He's also looking for security. He's playing better. He's off that knee injury. Yes, we know he can play. Again, we can. a lot of these players that we have can interchange. We don't have to play KP 45 minutes, 50 minutes. They, he can interchange it when he's not substituting, not playing well. You bring in Mitch. Mitch already plays with the off starters, so they, he plays well. They vibe well off each other, so that, again, interchangeable. KP, Mitch, they can play 20 to 20 minutes a piece. They, 25 minutes each is roughly good within that time frame. Obviously, play, maybe play KP more. Mitch, bounce off each other. That's easy. That's easy right there. They play off each other. Great defense, both of them. KP alone, as a starter, would help because he spreads the floor. He's an excellent three-point shooter. Not a little bit. Excellent catch and shoot. He got range. He got... Uh, he got range from out there, even from way, almost from half court, he can shoot. His three-point range is, I would say, very close to lethal. It's deadly. You give it to him, he's going to hit it. Jalen Brunson diving in, pitching it back out to him. Easy three. You know, him setting the screen that you're going to have to either go guard the seven three player who can shoot out his mind, or you're going to have to stop Brunson with the craziest footwork in the paint. That's going to be automatic lethal. What KP does, it frees up Randall. Randall's been playing beast mode for three years he's been getting doubled for three years 
both playoffs, he's been getting doubled every play, every minute. That's what people aren't taking a fact to it. He's been getting doubled every game, every minute, for three years and two playoffs. That's why you get some of the decision-making that he makes, some of the turnovers that he's making, some of the spinning and winning because he doesn't trust our catch-and-shoot players. Can RJ catch-and-shoot very well? No. Was Grimes doing it this year? Can they develop? Yes, they can. But at this level, this point in time right now, none of the players that Randall can throw to, either they turn the ball over, they're not ready for the catch, and they can't shoot. He can't give it to Mitch because Mitch can't shoot. He can't give it to RJ because RJ's inconsistent. He can't give it to Grimes because Grimes hasn't, he just started playing this year. He's still trying to find his rhythm, trying to get who he is. He's hit some big shots. You saw Randall trusting in him. And then later on after his shoulder, he was inconsistent, wasn't ready, or so on. He's just not ready. He'll be ready, I think, this year coming up. But that's some of the mental mistakes that we're looking at with Randall. So he has to force the shots. He trusts Jalen Brunson, so that's why him and Jalen Brunson were playing off of each other constantly. But he doesn't trust the other players and what they can do currently. So that's where you're seeing a lot of his his IQ errors, his, his making mistakes. He was trusting, speaking of IQ, he's trusting IQ. He knows when he gives it IQ, IQ would shoot the shot and it'll go. Uh, IQ, Emmanuel quickly, some of his issues that instead of just catching and shooting, he holds the ball too long. He'll over dribble. When he gets a pass from Randall, Randall's expecting him to shoot or try to put him in position there. He'll try to over dribble. He'll shoot out. And if you've seen a couple of times that they'll do too much dribbling between him and Randall, they waste a shot on the clock, and then they force a bad shot. So, again, catch and shoot players. Okay, that's what the team's looking for now. All right, so that's where KP would plug and play, work excellent. If he waves that uh, extension, we could get him just for money. Now, if he does a sign and trade to try to help Washington, I don't know why he would, because he was traded there without his will anyway. Um, if they didn't get anything for him now, or offering him a contract by now, I don't see why he would at the last minute. Waves his extension, makes him an unrestricted free agent. We can pay him for money. Pay him 31 mil, you know, 32 mil, whatever it is, three, four years. So him and Josh Hart would be locked down. Bada bing, bada boom, we balling. Attic Burke again, vet minimum, mid, mid, whatever the mid level exception, vet minimum, rocking and rolling. You're talking about Hart, KP, Alec Burke, Dunzo. East Coast, we'd be in the finals for sure. The second round, we'd be giving people mad problems. That's our best case scenario. That would be, I would say, the best, easy, no trades, no picks, just strictly paying people money, moving money around, moving players, waving players. That's the ideal situation. That would be the number one option for us. You got that? You good? KP, Alec Burke, boom, we ball it. East Coast, we, we out there. That would be if, again, if he wastes his money, he obviously is going to wave it. He wants longer contracts, wants reliability. He's a seven-footer. He could get hurt again. It's possible, but he's played 67 games last year, played 62 the year before that, I think 58 the other one. So he's been playing enough. Even Mitch missed games. Centers, they're going to go through that. So that's where you would have them, Jericho Sims, to help out in between on when they're down and start learning and filling the role. So centers, we we good on that. So that would be number one. Now, if they did a sign and trade with Porzingis, I did. I was looking at the trade off to try, to try to trade, and I was looking at the numbers. The trade that did work would be RJ and uh, iHeart, not Josh Hart, uh, Eisen, uh, Hartenstein. So you got Isaiah Hartenstein and RJ would work if they had to do a sign and trade. The money works because, remember, uh, RJ has the poison pill. So the poison pill means even though he's making 10 mil this year, you got to trade him for a player that's making equal to what he's going to bring, which is, I think, $23 million or more. So that's where KP's 31 would work. And then Isaiah Hartenstein's 9 mil uh, would work, 9 and change. So I did the trade machine. It worked good. Boom. That money works. I'm not going to get into, oh, you got to get picks. And, uh, yes, they can. that's up to them. They can throw how many picks whatever that's up to the organization i don't care about that the money has to work first all the other stuff later so i think that would that, that would work rj and isaiah hartenstein you get kp again you got jericho sims that frees up that you got kp 
you're feeling small forward, we'll get another player. We'll talk about that later. I like Jalen McDaniels. Bye. Super defensive player, three-point. Look him up. He's fire. Anyway, I think that would work right there if they did a sign and trade. If he doesn't, if he waves his money and that Washington's like, yo, you got to help us, man. Come on. Can't let you go for nothing. Let's do a sign and trade. Anyway, that money would work for about 30, 31 mil. We give him RJ, iHeart. You know, maybe instead of iHeart, maybe they want Emmanuel quickly. Whatever. Plug and play. But they need that money. So maybe RJ, iHeart, and maybe quick. They free up some money some other ways. That could work as well. We'll worry about that later. But that's how you get KP. Got that clear? Number one option. I would still prefer to get him the money. No, no, Don't lose anybody. Then we could use RJ and other players and other trades on there. That would be ideal. Now, the next person, the number two, so if it's not KP, which that's probably the first goal, the next person, which I think we all love, fits the system, it's a wing, defender, started blowing up this year in the playoffs with shooting, three-pointers, offensive game started blowing up, knows Jalen Brunson, knows Josh Hart, came from Villanova, you got it. Miles Bridges. Mikhail, 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 Brooklyn Bridges. Ah, I get it, Brooklyn Bridge. Ah, Brooklyn Bridge. Anyway, Bridges from Brooklyn. Would they do it? I don't know. Maybe there's a three-team deal that they get someone else somehow. Anyway, the money for RJ and OB, which would work for them too because they're getting young talent. Again, that doesn't matter anymore in conference out of that. They're trying to build. Maybe we give them RJ, OB, Maybe two number ones, one unprotected, one protected pick. That would work. You get Bridges. At this point, remember, we're trying to build a, a team that's contending right now. So do you really care about picks? Not really. At least not for the next four years. Time to get rid of them joints. Flip them. Throw a couple of twos in there. Whatever. I think RJ and OB would work. Two young talents. That adds to the youth. Um, that gives them some scoring ability. Like what basically Bridges was giving them. They're getting 20 points a game from RJ. Was 22. He can grow with the Cam Johnsons and and the youth that they would have there. Obi would work great. You still keep him in Brooklyn. Still gives them some highlight reels that they know he's beloved in Brooklyn. That'll get some more seats over there to Brooklyn because nobody goes to Brooklyn. They, all right, nobody. James Harden had to pay people to go watch him. Obi would put some seats in there. RJ would put some seats in there. They got to look at filling the seats. So I think that as a business move to fill seats, sell jerseys, that'll help them as well which most people aren't thinking about anyway. That's why I think about it. So I think that'll work. I think they would bring more seats that these are New York products. People love RJ. People love Obi. I think that'll be a very smart move from Brooklyn. It helps them sell Jersey, helps them put seats in the, maybe get some new fans or some New York fans to go over there just to watch the game. That's a switch teams. Anyway, that gives that. We get Bridges. That's the most ideal plug and player. Um, it only increased us a little bit on offense, about 0.10 offensively, but 2.7 defensively. He's a great defender. I don't think that was taken into account how he played in the playoffs, so that would definitely help us. You're talking about starting line would be Jalen Brunson, Grimes, a lethal defender, Bridges in the place of three, great defender. You're talking about Randall and Mitch. If we can somehow get Bridges and KP... Mind blown. Over. We win in that. But anyway, that would be the top as far as trades. If we can get KP straight money and somehow we can give, I don't care if we get four or five picks at that point to Brooklyn. If you can somehow get Bridges and KP on the same team with us and only lose RJ, OB, and maybe Emmanuel quickly, obviously we love them. Again, we're not talking about money. We're talking about success for the team. Crazy. That'll be bananas. But RJ Obi works. RJ and Emmanuel quickly work. I already done the trade options on there. Again, picks, I don't care. Whatever they got to do with that. That would be the number two scenario. And then if you can add KP on top of that, forget about it. We winning at all. Um, another trade I was looking at is Emmanuel quickly and Washington Jr. that we just picked up. I don't know that the Spurs would do it, but... 
They need a point guard. They got a pretty good point guard there, but they they only have literally one point guard in San Antonio, um, and he's been playing pretty good. But it and this guy's been a little injured. We wanted him before. I think they can replace that, even though he's really good. You need somebody to space the floor with the new guy they're gonna get, one by Nyama. If you get IQ and Washington out there, you can get Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell is someone who's been injured. They like him, but he's been injury prone. They can probably get some other talent out there. This is just, would they do it? I don't know, but money works. Maybe a pick, something like that. Nothing too crazy, but that's someone that you can keep an eye on that. Maybe we can snatch him from there, but I would probably still take uh, Jalen McDaniels anyway. Cheaper. You don't got to get rid of IQ. That's it. But Bridges, we're not looking for it. Now, this is going to be the buzz here. This is what I think the Knicks have been talking about. I think one that nobody liked before, but I think this is something that has legs to it. I think uh, this is one has an opportunity. Now, this is the dreaded Zach Levine trade. Zach Levine, if you look at the numbers, now we're just looking at numbers. Everybody can say whatever, forget contract because he's already got his bread. Everybody, more teams are going to make money next year for cap, all that good stuff. The money is a lot for him. Money is a lot. But what the team is building, they're looking for catch and shoot, offensive productivity. Defense is uh, not as great on that uh, for him particularly, but again, if you're moving him to the small forward where RJ was or vice versa between him and Grimes, I think he's going to ball out. He's very fast for small forwards. He'd be able to dominate at the three. He plays the two and the three, so he plays it already, and he's playing at an elite level at the three. He's a great catch and shoot. He's a great three scorer. He's a great pull-up three, three score, uh, three, three-point shooter. So those are key things that the Knicks have been looking for. There's been reports before that from Ian Begley, um, from uh, a couple other players, a couple other beat writers, but legitly it's been uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel correctly, uh, Ian Begley for almost two seasons now. They've been talking about they've been interested, there's talks back and forth. So this is from uh, a, a credible source. Uh, they've been talking about for a while. So when there's smoke, there's probably fire. Depending on what, Chicago wants to do. They're in a conundrum. Uh, their center right now, um, Vujicic, he's, he's he's expiring. That's 100 mil expiring. Do they resign him? You're going to have to give him money. Do they sign him? Possibly. So now they're out of window. Do they sign him? Do they keep uh, Rose? Um, De De Rosen, I mean, uh, who's 32, 33 years old, making $27 million. And he was their best player. But he's, I mean, so, but he's in his mid thirties. He's got maybe one or two good years left, as far as what he can contribute. So those are things that the, you're looking for is to see what can he do. So can he continue? Can you know? You, you're talking about uh, Lonzo Ball is going to miss the entire season next year. So you're going to take another L while paying all this salary, and then the cap's going to go up after that, and then you're going to see if if Lonzo Ball, who you gave a contract to. It's going to be able to ball out at that point? Or do you do a semi-rebuild? And I think that's more realistic for what they're what they're doing now because they're paying all the salary over the cap and then you're not even competitive. That's something that realistically I think they can they want to move out of. Um, they can rebuild with a lot of their youthful players. Uh, the Patrick Williams, which I like. I'd love to get him, but I don't think they're going to let him go. Pat Will... Um, you know, you got you got some young players. All that to say, if you traded RJ, Obi, and Isaiah Hartenstein, that trade is successful. I'm simply talking money. Extra picks and all that, I'm not an organization. I don't know what they negotiate. However, money-wise, that works. And if you did Zach Levine and you had Jalen McDaniels, which, again, I'm high on because if you look at him, He's a three. He, he can shoot three as far as Jalen McDaniels. He can finish at the rim very well. He's a great, I mean, he's got a nice touch off the glass. Not only just Duncan, um, he's about six, close to 6'10". Long wing defender. He's a very, very, very good defender. So he would fit in tip system. A 3 and D player. Huge upside. And you can get him for cheap. 
He's a, a free agent, unrestricted free agent from Philly. Check him out. If you add that, and I looked at the numbers, if you do that trade, RJ, OB, and iHeart, you get Zach Levine, the money is good, and you add Jalen McDaniels, that adds our offense efficiency to 2.74 and our defense to 2.73, all in the positive, which is very good. Not as good as you just adding KP. KP was 340 and 361 offensive and defensively. But that's really good, and that gives you an elite person who's up there. His numbers are right along with Devin Booker, uh, with Bradley Beal, with other top scoring people. Um, so as an elite person, if you can get Zach Levine, which I think Zach and KP and Bridges are, are what we're really looking at. If you're looking at a superstar to take a name, I, I really think Zach Levine, there's smoke there. There's smoke. Money, you don't see it, but we got a capologist who's a brain with numbers. So that's something that we want to keep an eye out. I think Zach Levine could have legs to it. I think that can really have legs. Bridges would be, it's almost a dream if Brooklyn would do it. Maybe we need a third team to get involved and somehow pull that Bridges trade off. Although I do think the RJ and OB would work. That definitely helps them with youth and players that can bring draw fans to, to the seats there and watch games. So I think that helps them a lot. Plus maybe a couple of picks here and there. I think that'll help them. Since they know they're not in contention anyway, let's get some talent. They still, you know, they're going to need a point guard and some talent there. And that can, maybe that helps out uh, Ben Simmons because they're stuck with Ben. So can you have other players like, I don't know, maybe RJ. So, you know, maybe RJ do a three team trade. Maybe they don't want RJ because RJ and Ben might not work. Maybe they get Toronto involved and move RJ to Toronto for maybe a Pascal or, or, you know, somebody else that can score that frees up Ben Simmons. And then they keep Ben Simmons at the point, get somebody from Toronto there. RJ goes to Toronto, maybe a three team deal, something like that. And then we get bridges. So I think a three team deal would work, would work there because they got to do something with, uh, with Ben Simmons. They can't get a whole bunch of people that can't shoot. So Obi definitely would work. Obi would bring fans there. Uh, but maybe a three-team deal to get Bridges. I see that more than likely. RJ goes to Toronto. Somebody from Toronto comes over here. And then we get Bridges. Plus, they get a bunch of picks, maybe from Toronto, whatever. I think that would work. But overall, I think Zach Levine, KP are the real deal. Uh, Bridges and Devin Vassell are others to look out. Along with the video, but that way you guys can see how the organization is thinking based off what we see. Because a lot of stuff is just people wishing, hoping, not really thinking of what's in front of your face that you can see that they've given you. So this video was to let people look at it from a business aspect of the team, what direction the team is going based on what they've told you and what you've seen and what they've done. The moves they made from the talent at the top, from the coaching, the structure that they've done, who they brought in, where did those people come from, what did they do. All leads to what they did at Utah. You can see that doing it here. The last three years, you can see that it's been working. Now that they got rid of Scott Perry, uh, I think Leon already knows he got the idea for the job. I think it's him or the other person that they just bought in uh, that's going to take over for the job. I think Leon would be phenomenal because he's already an agent. No one's going to negotiate better than him. So um, what they're looking at there, that's what you're looking at. So that's what the organization's building. Then you're looking at your roster, where you have the biggest asset you have. Your two, you got three players: Jalen Brunson, uh, you got Randall, and then you got RJ. RJ and Randall been together the longest four years. That's not working. Their numbers aren't good. Uh, they're all clogging the paint on there. So as you're looking at that, that that's what's not working for them. So you want to make sure that you have that flowing and working. So that's what's going to work for you by getting rid of one of them. So I think RJ's, R, I, I think it's time. We paid him, we got him the longest, he broke the Charlie Ward curse of someone we drafted on there. Oh, forgive me. Uh, so overall, that's what you're looking at. So I think RJ's gonna be the one to go. And then after RJ, that's it. So I think he's gonna be the, the odd man out. So as we get him, he's gonna be the one to go. He's gonna be the big chip. Uh, he has the highest upside for tradeability on there. So that's what you're looking for overall.
as we see. Love RJ, but if you're going to make a home run swing, if you're going to make a major move, that's what it is. It's going to be RJ. Uh, Randall has done more for this team than RJ has. There, there's been hopes and developing for youth, and, and he's going to be phenomenal, but I don't think we can wait that time frame. That's why you get rid of RJ and his numbers, and he's brought up his numbers in the playoffs, so I think that definitely helps his trade value because so you can see that He's, he, he can play. He can play well in the playoffs, unlike Randall currently because it's a clogged paint. But that's what you're looking for. I'm probably looking at RJ being moved. If And the only reason you move him, only reason you move him is if you can get someone better, a star. Not superstar, but a star. You get rid of RJ to get a Zach Levine. You move RJ to get a Bridges, two or three team deal trade. You move RJ to get... Um, only a sign and trade for KP. Those are the only reasons you're going to get rid of him or Randall. I doubt Randall's going anywhere. You're not going to get anything close to what Randall can provide for you. So that's what we're looking at here. That's what you should see coming up. Um, KP can waive his extension the 21st of June, I believe, just before the draft. So you're going to see a lot of movement. You're going to see other teams making moves, but those are more than likely our targets. We get any one of those targets that I just mentioned, that solidifies us minimum next two years. Minimum next two years. So we should be able to exceed the Phillies. We should be able to exceed Boston, whatever they're going to do with them. So anything that they do, that's what you're looking at. And that's going to take us and build our foundation, and you'll be happy, and then we can get you guys off the ledge. So more you think, along with the video, I like giving a lot of details, probably more than enough, but uh, tell me your thoughts on it. Put I always chat with everybody in the comments. I always read your comments. I always comment on it. Let us know. We're going to talk back with you, not just me, all my other castmates here, my brother, my cousin. Um, we haven't done it live because maybe I, I'm a nerd for this on the here and everybody's eyes are busy, but we'll do it live soon. Y'all want to live? Let me know. Maybe this Sunday we'll talk about what we just discussed here. Maybe we'll go live and see what you guys got to say. But uh, I think that's where we're going. I think that's the direction. And you should be excited. It's going to be a great summer, even if we stand pat. Even if we stand pat and just had minimal changes in Alec Burke, Jalen McDaniels, that alone would take us leaps and bounds. So no matter what we do, it's going to take us to the next level. Whatever changes we make this year is going to take us to the next level. So that you should be excited for, that you should be happy and support your team, support your organic fanatics. We're bringing them truth bombs. We hit you with it. Know what I mean? Yer. Salute, like, subscribe, comment, check us on Instagram. We out there. We out here. We here. Peace.